Welcome back to Kerbal Space Program Breaking Ground. And yes, this looks like a lander. It has legs. It is a very, very tiny lander and it's approaching the moon. We have underneath this nose cone, we have a couple of batteries and the octo. Nothing else, so there's nothing worthwhile showing there. A uh, couple of science experiments. Science Junior, which increases the weight by 200 kilograms, but we are fine with that. A barometer and a thermometer and a tiny, well, a, a 200 fuel tank and a spark. Basically, and all this was launched on top of a Terrier stage, on top of a T uh, T45 stage. So yeah, fairly straightforward as rockets go, and still within that 30 pa 30 count limit. So we are just going to try and land. Now the sort of problem you have with this is unmanned, which means we need contact with Kerbin. That's fine as long as we're not blocked by the moon itself. However, we've got to be a little bit careful here that we don't land in a dip. So we're gonna have to land. Uh, maybe around here, and then we should be able to maintain contact with the planet. So I think I'm going to go in a little bit, uh, a little bit sooner than this maneuver node, and instead of circularizing, I'm just going to go for straight in, and we'll see, we'll see how well that actually works in practice. So uh, let's just move this around a little bit. Um, around to now is fine-ish, and uh, let's just move it up a little bit further, and let's just increase this a little bit just with the regular drag handles. Whoops. And uh, let's just bring ourselves into uh, maybe sort of there would seem to be nice. 400 meters per second and we have 1100. So that's going to be perfectly fine, leaving us with an extra 700 for hopefully landing rather than crashing. So let's see how well that goes. We are going to move our maneuver a little bit. And uh, at this point, it doesn't much matter where we actually do this burn. It's going to be around the same kind of area on the planet. So we're just going to burn. And that's going to start going. Being a little bit careful when you're heading out here to maintain your electric charge. Uh, I do have a couple of solar panels on this, but uh, not an excess amount. So we do have to be just a tad careful. And here we are coming in. So we're going to just slow down. And there. Now you'll see there is in Flight Engineer. We've got all kinds of different things, impact altitude, etc. Suicide burn, suicide delta V. Suicide delta V happens to be 686, and we have 709. <laughs> okay, I'm just saying that may well be, uh, yeah, a, a tad close. Uh, however, we will see how well it goes. We do have a little bit of shock absorbance, that being the gear. And we are going to make sure that we are continuing to face one of our solar panels towards the sun. And we'll see how well this goes. So uh, I don't really have any other need for a maneuver node now. What I do perhaps have a need is the surface um, retrograde marker. So we'll just leave it there. That is going to change, obviously, as we get a lot closer. So we're going to warp all the way in. And we're going to try this. You'll see that marker right there. It's going to show you where we're actually going to be landing. And it's four minutes 34 until our suicide burn. So we don't have any control over this particular marker. Uh, sorry, the, we don't have any SAS locking for that marker, which makes this a little bit hard even so. If I were you, I would save at this point. Maybe I should as well. So we're coming in, we've got about 20 seconds left on the clock. And I'm going to point our, retro our retrograde marker, but I'm also going to leave it for a couple of seconds over that um, suicide burn counter. We don't have time for hover. We need to bring it, this thing in as close as we possibly can do to the surface, which is this. Uh, this is going to be a little bit uh, a little bit hairy. Let's see. So we got 0, 1, and 2, 1.9. So let's see how 1.9 does. <laughs> All right. So there you can see our marker. It's in red. That's where we're going to land or crash, as the case will probably be. Hopefully some of this will actually survive. The legs will absorb something. The tank and the engine will absorb something. But the science junior is terrible. It will generally just not absorb anything whatsoever. And in we come. Oh, that's getting close. It's getting real close. And... Oh, look at that. Look at that. <laughs> it survived. Okay, we're not getting back off the surface again, mind you, but it survived. More importantly, our solar panel <laughs> ended up at the top. There's one on the bottom as well, so, you know, the, the chances are good. And we have exactly zero liquid fuel. 
Okay, so we can get our science done. We have material study, we have pressure scan and temperature scan, none of which will actually do much for us. It would obviously be much better if we could return them, but for now we cannot, so we'll have to transmit them. We have some electric charge, so let's transmit, and yes, it'll become inoperative. Same thing here. So all three of those are gonna use up some electric charge. Some of that's been sent, hopefully. Yep, all been sent. Uh, yep, all been sent. So that was with two batteries underneath the nose cone, and that was with uh, just one solar panel basically facing the sun, and that, that will work perfectly well. And of course, you can do other experiments with this, but um, I'm not... <laughs> I want to build a better lander if we do next time. That's incredibly, uh, uh, incredibly hairy. Let's just put it that way. Okay, so where are we going to go from here? We're going to go back to the space center. Uh, we have landed on the moon, but uh, we do not have the contract with us. That was just for some science to get us a little bit more R and D done. Do we just still have the contract if we do that? No, I don't think we do. I think it says you've done it, so you don't get the opportunity to do that. That's quite annoying, actually. It is, of course, entirely possible that that was just down to it expiring, but uh, we'll see what we need to do for that. The next mission up for that, though, the main mission is to dock two things in orbit, so that takes a little bit more... Uh, well, it takes RCS, for one thing, to really do that properly, So um, and docking ports, so we, we have to consider that. Uh, we do get fuel systems available. If we want to take that, we get 90, we got 98, so we can afford one node and one node only. Okay, so uh, do we need any of these yet? This is for the more the ground-based stuff. It would be nice to have them, but uh, not essential until we get the ability to land properly on other planets. So flight control again, not too concerned, although the lander can is here. So for manned landing, we're going to need um, 90, and we need 45 to get a lander can. Although we could go with a capsule, I suppose. Yeah, could go with the capsule, but the RCS is also here. So we want to be able to maneuver stuff around. We're going to need this node anyway. Uh, landing, yeah, just the extra landing struts. Not too concerned about that in the start of the game. And so just some aerodynamic stuff. So it's really going to be between uh, possibly fuel systems to get more efficient boosters. Uh, we can uh, asparagus stage if we get that. We get the better fuel tanks, so that's nice as well. And that may be a good idea to get to a manned lander. So I think I'm going to actually take that one. And let's see what we can build with it. I'm going to want to take a, uh, a mission or so. So bring Moonstone back with you. This expires in 10 years. And we can now take a maximum of seven contracts because we upgraded the station. So um, I'm not sure. This I think this is a new mission for breaking ground. I don't, certainly don't remember this in previous versions. Find a Moonstone, have a Kerbal pick it up, and return it to Kerbin. We suspect you can find one of these in the canyons, East Far Side Crater, or Lowlands Biomes. Uh, so if we're not in those, then yeah, tough luck. However, we do get a bit of an advance, so we should take that. Observational surveys of the moon, and uh, that is more for if you get yourself into a polar orbit, you can then pass above these things, and it's just crew reports in each case. So again, that is straightforward to do, and we'll get you a bunch of money. Um, oh, is there anything else that we want? Test heat shield at the launch site? Well, I suppose. <laughs> I mean, we'll take it. We'll get a little bit of money for it. It's not like uh, we need to do anything for that. Uh, the XL parachute, we're not going to do that. Mm -hmm. Test. Oh, we need to activate the decoupler. Yeah, I'm not going to do that on the uh, well we landed. Uh, well, I suppose we could. We could decouple our heat shield and add something in there. But um, yeah, I'm not going to worry about it. Sat launcher one in adjusted orbit. So that's quite a nice one. It gives you money for moving that probe around. And it doesn't say... I think I have, they're both called sat launcher one. So I think we should go and rename one. <laughs> I launched two of them and they're both called sat launcher one. Uh, there's three of them. Sorry. So I need to rename all these. Well, let me just do that and then we can find out which one it's actually talking about. And there we go, the renaming gives us contract two, and it wants us to change this uh, to slightly different orbit, eight, uh, 10 by 8, and then inclination 87 degrees and all kinds of other stuff. Let's just see whether that's actually doable. It should be, because that, that parachute is... Pr uh, parachute? That probe is pretty good. Uh, it's got plenty of fuel left, or they usually do. So contract two is here, and uh, the orbit it wants us to get to is there. Now, they're both going in the same direction. Um... 
I want to say yes. Let's fast forward. Yes, they are both going in the same direction. Good. So we just need to turn this orbit somewhat and then extend it a little bit. Let's just zoom out. Yes, yeah, so it needs to be moved and turned. So that should still be OK as long as this thing has fuel. Let's go and check whether it has enough fuel left to do that. Yeah, I've got 1400 Delta V. That should be fine. Let's take that mission and get ourselves some more money. We have, however, got this mission as well. Transmit or recover scientific data from the surface of the moon. Well, guess what we have on the surface of the moon? We're going to take that and I think we're going to jump across, across, across to our ship that's landed. A little probe that we landed in the part of the episode. So, uh, Puddle Jumper 3C4 is the one on the moon. Uh, I did refly it, by the way, so it's now landing on its side, which is a bit of a problem. Uh, I just wanted to refly it just in case. Well, one, I want to see whether I could actually do that again. Yes, I could do that again and land perfectly fine. However, I wanted to see if the contract was still there just before I started the mission. Uh, it turned out it wasn't. So... Um, or at least just before I landed, I should say, rather than started the mission. So uh, we'll go on to that one and let's see if we have any the, enough remaining power to um, basically transmit some science. And that's what's useful to have something down there on the moon. So you see it's, it's now on its side. Uh, I could try and rock it backwards and forwards. I'll just turn it a little bit, but uh, I'm not going to worry about that. I'm just going to use this to log the temperature and we'll send that temperature scan back because uh, that's not very much data. And there we are. So that's the science data from the surface of the moon done. And we should be able to just go back to the tracking station and then jump straight across to the contract two and get even more money for that. So contract two up on to fly. And uh, let's see what it takes to actually move this around. So at this particular distance, it's not really going to matter that much what I try to move first. Uh, I'm going to, well, we want to just get the point roughly where the orbits cross. And um, that's really hard to do when it's <laughs> directly above or directly below. So I'm just going to go for right there and a maneuver. And then uh, I'm going to try and remember which way it is going to be for turning this orbit. There we go. Normal. And we're also going to need some prograde again. So you see how much it's actually costing us to go around. It's fine. I'm going to keep on pulling this around and then we'll adjust everything else once it gets back into place. So that's that mostly adjusted. I'll just play around with the other handles a bit until we get the target orbit or roughly around there. And here we go. Uh, we're going to get most of the orbit right in one maneuver. Uh, you'll see the bottom will end up pretty much online. The top won't because we're already just underneath this ascending node anyway. So uh, we should be fine. It's only a 12 second burn. It's going to 485 and we have 1369 so this will be even in the front of the contract if we get it in future so let's get that done it's only a 12 second burn and this will swing ourselves around and it will adjust our orbit so that's going to bring us in and there we go so let's slow the engine down all right and then we just need a second maneuver node at the bottom uh, as far down there as we can and probably around well around Perry. There we go. Add a maneuver. Increase our prograde. Uh, yeah, oops. Don't want to target Minmus just yet. <sighs> go away. Let's just do it with this, given that this was actually created for this particular version. So there we go. And that will adjust us into place. Roughly enough for this particular uh, contract anyway. We can adjust the, uh, the radial to get that a little bit more accurate, but shouldn't need to be. Another 24 meters per second. And of course, we need to go around to when that's about to happen. So let's warp forwards. There we go. And move ourselves to the maneuver node. Burn time of 0.6 seconds, so I'm not going to go full burn. I'm just going to do something that uh, should get us roughly around about right. Uh, let's get there. And we should be able to do this now, to be honest. Let's adjust this forwards. And there we go. The contract's done. So we can stop at this point and we should have quite a bit more money. How much money do you have? We have 252,000. I started the episode with around about 130, so that's a pretty good gain. Now, with that done, I'm going to take this other mission as well to conduct on observational surveys of the moon. This is going to be a polar uh, mission, manned mission, because it needs to be a crew report. So we'll take it, and it's got a duration of 10 years, like everything else. Uh, it'll give us some money to play with, but we definitely need to take this astronaut complex upgrade. 
because right now we can't go EVA, and now we can, which means we can get out, first of all, on the moon. We have an upgraded spacesuit, but more importantly, we can also get extra science for EVAing all over the place. Not necessarily, I wouldn't recommend doing it in atmosphere as you're going up or coming back down. I have tried it in the past. It's, well, I guess it depends how much Jeb or Val can hold on to the ladder. Um, yeah, but we're not going to do that. Anyway, we can get it for space low, space high, moon high, and even moon low if you really wanted to. Um, so, yeah, and we also have the tracking, basically tracking upgrades and the mission control upgrades, which means we should be able to get quite easily into a polar orbit. So let's actually adjust one of our uh, craft to be able to do this quite efficiently. Um, we're not necessarily going to get uh, much extra science out of it other than the EVA. So let me just take a look and make some changes. And here we are in orbit on that modified craft. It basically was our earlier sort of launcher, but with a modification in that we have a longer um, terrier stage. That's going to be our orbital basic circularization. It's all going to, also going to do the maneuver to get to the moon. And then above that, we have this small fuel tank, the 200 with the spark on it, just like we did with the unmanned, except now that we're on top of this, we have our little tiny capsule. Now, um, can we actually get out at this particular point? We can. Good. And we can take our uh, experiment here. Uh, it's not very much for Earth, you know, orbit, but we can collect that into the top if we want to. And uh, not that that's particularly needed. I'm not sure I even brought that container along with us. I don't think I have anything else on board, so we don't really need that in this particular case. So, yeah, you can optimize that a little bit more on your excursion. However, out to the moon we go. And now we can see the places we need to actually go. Now, you can do this as long as you have this orbital line um, within whatever inclination they're on. Unfortunately, two of those are right at the South Pole. So, as I said before, probably best to actually arrange this to be um, essentially entirely uh, polar. So, we're going to bring ourselves down. It uh, doesn't really much matter where, so we can go over the top or underneath. In this case, it's already set up for underneath, so why don't we just change that a little bit more. Uh, we're going to control this with prograde. There we go. That will take us directly underneath. There we go, like that. And then we need to just extend it a little bit more. So I just need to figure out which one of these. That's just tilt. Uh, so we're going to need to go radial. I think I'm going to increase the scale a little bit. And that's the wrong way. There we go. So radial. Uh, 8K is a little bit low. About 15. We need to be above 11 or so. So about 18 will be actually just fine. Bring our scale back down. Then we can adjust this with less scaling there. So that's up to 12, 15. OK, so that will do the job just fine. The only downside with being that low is you're going to be going quite fast over the surface. So uh, two of those are quite close to each other. So, hmm, yeah, I'm not quite so sure on that front, but uh, maybe we should extend that out a little bit further. Um, we're going to be going out the other way, aren't we? So let's just increase the scale. Let's bring this up to... Mm, up to about, uh, say, 40. In fact, can we actually see any stats on here? Uh, the moon. Do we have any information on where the science layer is? I do need to look at that, but I'll figure it out later. In any case, 42 will be fine for now, and that will work perfectly well. So we're going to spin ourselves around. Point of maneuver node, we've got 16 minutes to go, so I will just skip forward through all the maneuver stuff. You don't need to see that, you've seen it before. And we should be good. Now, this is going to take 866. We have 857 to go. So that's pretty good. We'll use up all this stage, and then we'll be have a fresh new stage with 1500 Delta V to do any orbital stuff around the moon. Um, you could even try and land with that. I wouldn't necessarily recommend it. You probably wouldn't get back off again. Uh, you need probably another 1000 Delta V or so to make that comfortable. And here we go, we're in space near the moon, and our orbit, I've already circularized us, well not circularized, but I've already brought us to an orbit that will take us into moon high and moon low, which means we can now just exit our craft with this, and we can take that EVA report, that will give us 14 sites, pretty good. We want more than that however, so we're going to want to go all the way around until we get to up here somewhere. Let's warp all the way that way and we're not going to pass over those regions just yet but uh, we will get there and 
we're already at space high, so at this point we can just decelerate. And do exactly the same thing again. EVA report, and you, we can even transmit it, but I, I don't have any solar panels on here, so I'm not going to use up our power on that. Um, in fact, resources... Um, ah, we're in EVA, that's why. <laughs> Uh, electric charge 41.68 you don't use that as long as you're not using your C uh, SAS so you know we're not using that right now and now we just need to basically wait until we pass over these regions or rather as the, the sort of from this perspective as the moon rotates around we should go over those regions at some point so I'm not going to you know occupy your time doing that other than maybe just going around once and we should get to that kind of area Probably on the next on the next rotation, maybe. Let's just go once, maybe. Uh, that does look like we're going to come over it, hopefully. And now entering the zone. So now we need a crew report. And let's keep that. Collecting survey data. Good. And we'll just collect all of that in the top, which means I can just immediately go back into crew report without getting it out and getting back in again so yeah having that container there is a little bit helpful in this particular mission and you'll see that point's gone so all we need to do now is uh, basically wait until those come around and do exactly the same thing for those but i won't do that on camera and that's all now done you don't need to keep the crew report so you can just overwrite them so i didn't need that container after all again uh so that's all done good uh, the other thing we're going to do while we're out here though is eva reports now EVA reports is one of the only thing that is biome dependent. So we're going to be able to fly over all the biomes and we'll turn on interrupt here, an audio alert, and then we'll be able to basically get EVA reports from every single biome and get that all that lovely science from there. So EVA report it is, um, Highlands. In fact, you could stay out here if you wanted to, but I'm not going to actually do that. I'm going to get back in in, the, in each case and we'll just collect, not that we actually need to, and uh, be good to go. So now I just need to fast forward. Wait till the next time that pops up, which shouldn't take long. And I don't think it counts for high. I think it only counts for low. So what we could do to make sure that happens more often is uh, is basically um, lower our orbit. So I could bring down this side of the orbit. So let's just do that. So Perry, add a maneuver. Bring this in till it's uh, sort of... Right about there, 51, let's bring it in again, 41, about 37, 59, that'll do. So we will sort this out and bring in this orbit so that we can, there we, there we go, get another one. Uh, moon's poles, that's actually quite an interesting one. So I will uh, EVA, grab that, take it, board, and do the rest of them off camera. And with that, we're ready to actually come back. We've gone through quite a lot of the biomes. I think most, if not all of them. And now we have a moon. We know we're not in the position in, in the moon's orbit to make this really efficient. So I'm just going to go randomly. And we're just going to head this away. And we should be perfectly fine. You'll see our peri is 31. We'll adjust that a little bit more once we're out of the moon's influence. But that is going to be perfectly fine. So I'm just going to do that maneuver node. Uh, just like we've done the others. Position ourselves over here. And that's all set up, and we need to wait for all fast forwards. So let's just go forwards. 14, 13, 12. Bring ourselves in. We don't have to be terribly exact with this. We just need to get out of the sphere of influence. So 12 seconds remaining. Let's get ourselves right on money and uh, basically burn now. 600 meters per second to go, and we've got about double that left in the tanks, so more than enough to get back to Kerbin. Guess who forgot to put a decoupler between the capsule and the upper stage? <laughs> so I expended the rest of the fuel trying to slow ourselves down a little bit, and the engine and tank has actually survived. So we do have one other sort of emergency decoupler, so that this thing just doesn't crash with the single parachute. And that being we can jettison the heat shield. So the heat shield is in there somewhere, and once we get low enough, we can actually jettison that and uh, come in for landing. So let's see if that actually works. Hopefully it will. And here we are, coming in 
things are getting a little bit slower we need to we need to slow down a little bit more before we can use our parachute however and uh, we're going to be doing that once we're able to get rid of our heat shield so um there we go so now we can jettison the heat shield it's going to still be stuck there well stuck to the bottom of us until we launch the parachute and that will continue to be the case until we get a lot lower uh, as soon as um the parachute opens we'll of course arrest our motion and the rest of it just gonna it's just gonna fly off and hit the surface so yeah that should work just fine look we even survived hitting the um, very shallow pool that we landed in so yes let's just collect a couple of more things eva report that is fine for splash down in whatever biome this is uh shores and we just need a crew report as well uh but maybe we already have it um let's just collect all of that um, yeah, we certainly would need to overwrite, but that's fine to overwrite because the other ones were just for the moon and we already had that for the moon. So we've got all of that science. Recover the vessel. So that's about 20 different science experiments in one mission. And let's see how much science that gained us. Do we have enough to get those other nodes? 207 science. Yes, that's good. Uh, you can also get some science, uh, space low... Uh, EVA reports from around Kerbin as well, if you want to orbit that. I didn't bother that much. I got a couple coming back in. I will probably get the rest over, over time. It's not terribly important by comparison to the amount you get for the moon. So, yeah, that's lots of stuff done. Uh, well, do we have any missions left? I probably have that heat shield one that I forgot to do on launch. And that moonstone, which needs a lander. But we're up at 261,000 again. Science data from space around the moon. Uh, I guess we can just take that because I think I have a Muna satellite as well and we'll get some money for that. So Muna, Moon comes early. Do I have any science exp um, experiments on there? Hopefully I do. Let's go and check it out. Uh, yeah, well, we have Mystery Goo, I suppose. I would prefer that to be something reusable, but I guess we just don't have that. <laughs> oh, well. Uh, yeah, so Mystery Goo observation it is. And we will just transmit that back. Yes, it'll be non-functional from that point onwards. But that should get us the mission. Or the contract. Yep, there it goes. So that's that done. Back to the Space Center. And now we should have quite a bit of money. We should have getting up towards 300,000. Uh, the VAB upgrade, I've got a feeling, is like 450. So we're not there yet. And similarly, this is 900,000 for our R&D. But uh, we have a few other upgrades going. Which brings us on to the science. So in order to do that main mission of maneuver, we absolutely need to take flight control and we're going to need the RCS to be able to maneuver around space anyway. So we're going to have to take that too. That brings us down to 74 science. So we don't can't really afford much else just yet. So we'll have to get that mission. However, we did just get the lander can, which is a nice broad base to be able to land on the moon. And uh, unfortunately, not a very easy thing to get back to Kerbin. So one of the uh, ideas there is possibly to put a docking port on this. Once we have docking ports, where are you? Uh, you're in this node. We don't have the Nazi science, but we can get the rest of that maybe from that uh, EVA space low I was talking about. And with that, you could send a lander can off, bring it back to Kerbin orbit rather than Kerbin landing, and then maneuver and, you know, sort of get it um, sort of docked with a, a landing pod that we put up there. That is a nice option to go for. And we also have the mech features for maneuvering, but that's not terribly important. Uh, so yeah, we're getting fairly far up in the tree now. We can't get to this next tier of stuff until we upgrade the 900,000 uh, credits uh, of the R&D lab. But we have five nodes left, of which I'm not too concerned about the, uh, the aerodynamics nodes. So that's really four important nodes. Um, that's quite nice. You get the, uh, the two and a half meter heat shield. And then we obviously get the new breaking ground stuff in here as well. So yeah, we're definitely going to want that docking node if we are going to go with split launches. So I'm going to need some more, uh, some more science points from somewhere. However, that brings us to the end of this episode. Next episode, we will go doing more science, get, getting that available. And then I can probably get quite a, quite a lot more money just by doing really satellite missions. We have a fairly capable satellite launcher. With some of these, we have to actually launch a new satellite. And this is Polar uh, Antenna Generate Power. That's quite an easy one to actually do. But some of these also have uh, requirements for having certain experiments on board, like thermometers is easy because it's not very really heavy at all. But there are ones like here with mystery units and thermometer. 
and uh, Mystery Goo again. So, yeah, you do have to modify them a little bit. But each one of those gets you, you know, getting eight to 81,000. So it's pretty good. What's even better is we now have the Explore Minmus um, contract. This just happens to need a flyby. And a flyby to Minmus happens to be easier than a fl well, easier than dealing with the moon. It just needs an inclination change. And now they have flight planning that is not hard at all. So it's worthwhile taking this and uh, it's going to be one of our missions, but it doesn't really have a duration. So we can take that whenever and do it whenever. So let's take that and that gets us to 360,000. Easy. <laughs> Okay, uh, we still can't upgrade the vehicle assembly building, so we still got a limit of 30 parts, and we don't have action groups until we upgrade this. So between the episodes, I'm going to be doing some more satellite missions, and that'll get us the amount we need here to upgrade our VAB, which is the next upgrade we need. Otherwise, hope you've enjoyed the episode. We'll see you next time for some more Kerbal Space Program breaking ground. And if you've got any comments below on suggestions on particular changes to builds that you've seen here, feel free to. Uh, feel free to subscribe, share, click on the bell, you've got notifications. But of course, as always, thanks for watching.